everyone. Um, welcome to the Q&A talkback for Block 9 of Cerebral Fest 2020. My name is Magdalena Waz, and I'm the co-creator of My Astronaut, a little web series that screened at Cerebral Fest last year. And I'm extremely excited to moderate this panel, which is, for lack of a better word, stuffed with talent. As you may already know, if you've been watching all week, Cerebral Fest is the premier annual indie TV and web series festival in the US and a welcoming home for digital creative talent in the TV industry. We honor the year's best content and offer a chance for new creators to connect with industry executives, grow their networks, learn new skills, and build community. And of course, we would like to thank our fest sponsors this year, including Dell Technologies, AMC Networks, Shutterstock, and Adorama, who helped make this community possible. Today, we're welcoming some of the creators of the incredible shows in our short form drama category. But really quickly, if this is your first event with us, here are just a few notes about interacting on our platform. You can click on the TV icon on the left side of your screen to open the virtual screening room to watch any of the shows. You can click on anyone in the audience to start a private video chat with them, and we won't be able to hear you up on stage. And if you haven't already, please allow your browser to enable your camera and your microphone. And you can do that by clicking the gear icon in the top right corner and change the settings to enable your camera and your microphone. Um, but most importantly, we'll be taking your questions and comments later in the session. So please, please participate. I have a ton of questions for these creators, but I could always use more. Um, and to do that, you'll wanna use the hand icon to raise your hand if you have a question and would like to come up on stage here with us, or if you wanna just submit a written question, click on the question mark bubble, type it to us, and it'll get zipped over to me. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome our first group of guests onto the stage. We'll split our creators into two little groups. Um, so group one is Monica Arsenal, writer, co-director, and co-producer and actor of None Habits. Um, Andrea Chiavelli, who is on the production team for The Sad Party. And Frederick Zymet, who was the writer, director, and producer of W. Welcome to the stage. Hi, everyone. All right. Hello. So why don't we go through and um, introduce ourselves to our lovely audience? And because you're right next to me, I will start with you, Monica. Tell us where you're calling in from, um, your name, obviously, even though I already said it, <laughs> and then the uh, title of your show, your role, and that's it. I'm Monica. I'm calling in from Brooklyn, where I live, um, and I am the creator of Nun Habits. I also directed it with my um, director, Sonja, and um, I acted in it um, as well as one of the characters. Um, and I produced it um, as well, which you kind of do when you're a creator. That's that's just kind of like all wrapped up in there. But yeah. Absolutely. Um, and how about you, Andrea? Hello, everyone. Here is Andrea Chivelli from uh, Italy, uh, Rome. Uh, we, we did this, the Desert Party, uh, as you said, and I, I work in the production field, so uh, it was pretty tough and and nothing. That's it. <laughs> and, and you, Frederick? Um, I'm, I'm Frederick Zahm. I'm, I'm from Luxembourg. So teeny tiny country in the middle of Europe, and I'm living in the city of Luxembourg next to Luxembourg. <laughs> uh, I'm the writer, creator, producer, director of W, uh, but I mostly mainly work as a screenwriter. Fantastic, thank you. And let us get our second group up here for introductions. Um, so that would be Yosh Ginton. See if this works. Yes. And then Jeremy Osborne and Misty Boland. Um, Yosh is the co writer of The Crown Experiments, and Jeremy and Misty are co writers, co directors, and co producers of The Square Root. So let's go through and names, locations, shows, and roles. Um, Yosh, we'll start with you. Hey, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yosh. I'm from Israel, Tel Aviv, and I am. Um, co-created with my sister, um, the sci-fi show, The Crown Experiments. Um, I've written it, directed it, and edited it uh, alongside with my sister. Fantastic. And then Jeremy and Misty? 
Hi, my name is Misty Boland. I'm co-creator of The Square Root. And, and I'm uh, Jeremy Osborne, and I am the same title. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, and we're calling in from Lawrence, Kansas. Good, that's uh, Central Time still? Okay, there they are. <laughs> um, okay, so let us very quickly move on to questions. And I'm going to keep Yosh and Misty on screen just to give our um, tech team a break here from popping people on and off. Um, so the first question that I want to start everyone off with is, I noticed a theme running through these projects. It seems like perception and misunderstanding and the way that one person perceives the word world versus the way another person perceives the world are important themes to all of these projects. And I'm wondering what you did in your stories to kind of differentiate between perception and reality, um, both in terms of how you either how you wrote it or how you shot it or how you're presenting it to the world. Um, and Yosh, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, so my show is about um, a psychologist and his meetings with um, robots who committed murder and waiting for their uh, executions. So and each episode is um, another session, another meeting with a different robot. So I think the challenge for me was um, how in each episode to create this tension between how we perceive this robot uh, at the beginning of the episode, how the psychologist perceiving, and how we perceive it at the end after we learn about the story. Each time we start um, and we have these assumptions because he's a robot and the murder, and by the end, we learn his story and we have uh, sympathy for him, I hope. So um, the tension and the challenge in each episode was how to, how to reveal the story bit by bit, um, because it's only a dialogue. It's only a, a therapy session, actually. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with you. I think there's this, uh, um, this conflict between how the psychologists perceive him and between the robot's um, inner complex uh, round world, inner mm -hmm. world. And you bring up a very good point because it's almost like, because you've stripped down the story just to the conversation, you have to, the, the change has to come from within the dialogue and it has to happen based on what these characters are saying to one another. And that interaction is very important. Yeah, precisely. Great, thank you. Um, and Jeremy and Misty, how about you? How does perception and understanding play a role in your stories? Well, for each of ours, it, um, it every story comes from a different character's point of view. And so it's uh, sort of what is racing through their mind at the moment before they make a big decision. And so um, it perception is 100% uh, uh, dependent on the character that is unraveling that part of the story and leading up to a decision they'll make. So um, it was it was interesting watching this block because uh, there was a lot of that that played in throughout a lot of these. So it was, it was, it was an interesting block to watch back to back for sure. Yeah, I agree. Um, I want to stick with you, Jeremy and Misty, and ask you about, I don't know, because of the the voiceover narration, I felt like there was a very kind of novelistic tinge to the way you were telling um, this narrative. And I'm wondering what kind of influenced that style and what kind of experimentations did it allow for? Sure. So we wanted to explore the internal monologue of each character. So that's really lent to using the voiceover. Um, through the dialogue. And then it also allowed us, and especially Jeremy as a cinematography, to really play with imagery and being very stylistic and surreal and going back from like memory to what they're seeing unfold in front of them. And so that was our process. And normally, historically, in projects, we haven't incorporated much voiceover. So this was a little yes. bit of a different approach for us. Um, but this particular project felt like it needed it. 
So did that come up, come out in revision or was that something that you had already been planning on doing? That was from the very beginning. Cool. Great. Um, and then, Yosh, I want to kick it over to you because something that's super unique and exciting about your narrative is that it has such a limited cast and just one very pared down location. So what went into that decision to keep the project so small and so focused on your actors? Um, I think, as Monica mentioned at the beginning, that um, we are all the producers of our show here and we are all independent creators and we have to find a way how to, how to create a show without a budget and independently with no producers. And many times I think it's, um, it's hard to, to create genres like uh, sci-fi or fantasy when you're independent. Um, for example, it's much easier to create, let's say, a comedy when you're creating a web show. And what really intrigued me in this concept of, uh, of uh, the current experiments is the concept that uh, I can create a sci-fi show that is extremely low budget and it's completely dialogue based. So the project um, had to be small. It had to be just two people talking in a dark room, um, only dialogue, two characters, um, and that that was the challenge, and that was um, the for me what was cool in this show, in this uh, concept. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, the, the whole concept is for it to be very small, very low budget, and the challenge to create a sci-fi only through dialogue with no mm -hmm. um, special effects or CGI, like mm -hmm. the the whole world building has to be created inside the, the viewer's mind. Uh, yeah, it's a good challenge that you give yourself. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, fantastic. Okay, so let us bring on the other three. Um, so that's Monica, Frederick, and Andrea, please. Now it's time to grill them. Okay. Frederick's here. Okay, I'll start with Frederick then. Um, so I'm going to ask you the same question that I initially asked the other creators is that a question of perception and misunderstanding and how you're sort of balancing um, what your main character sees versus the reality of the world that they're living in. Um, so so my main character is, is on the autistic spectrum. So from the first moment on, we try to really talk with people about it and try to find a way to, uh, to, differ to differentiate the reality and the perspective. And the first step was you know, working on the sound. A lot, a lot of work went to the sound. Then uh, tried to find a way to shoot him differently. So we went for a lens that call that's called the lens baby. So it's, it's a lens that's always like a little bit uh, weird on the edges. Uh, and then the last part was this kind of small scribbly effect when she sees something. So we see these lines and this writing, so to to find a way to show that she has this kind of immediacy when she sees something, everything comes together in her mind, uh, and then the rest, the reality was just uh, just how we could manage to shoot something in this kind of time frame and money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that those are always the limiting factors. I really loved the the way that the sort of visuals kind of layered themselves onto the story, so that you could see something outside of what you were actually perceiving. That was fantastic. Um, and Monica, how about you? Um, yeah, so Nun Habits is very much about perception and the way the world perceives things versus how you personally perceive things. As someone who was raised Catholic and grew up Catholic, whenever I tell people that I'm Catholic, they're like immediately assume that there's just so much judgment and hatred, which is really like, negative. I, the Catholic Church is getting a really bad rap. Um, <laughs> I mean, understandably. Um, but my perception of the Catholic Church, or at least what I grew up with from what I was taught in my home, is that love is at the center of everything. And it doesn't matter who you love um, or where your attraction is directed, that you're going to be loved by your creator no matter what. I think that's universal. Um, and I think Sister Cecilia really reinforces that point throughout the story. And I think 
April definitely um, reinforces the perception there. Um, I also think that the Catholic Church, I've spoken to some people, that the Catholic Church has this idea that sexual orientation or attraction is distilled down to the the sexual relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that really what's at the center is also love. So I think that there's a mutual understanding that could be reached that just isn't because there is this perception that just isn't there. Yeah, a kind of like people talking past each other. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And Andrea, how about you? How does perception and misperception play a role in the sad party? Um, so let's say that we um, we managed to uh, to develop this kind of uh, perception into levels. Let's say so. In the first place, you have uh, like the perception of uh, of the actors, so the protagonist, that he is a person that is seamlessly is normal, but he suffers from hallucination. So in the first place, you you see a story that is not is likable to be real, but you're not completely sure. And in the second place, you have like the perception of the fantasy or the reality from the spectator point of view, because uh, in our case, so you, you you pick the storyline. So mm-hmm. you have the ability to, cho- to choose your path. So uh, you as a spectator, um, you often put yourself in, uh, in the protagonist's shoes. So... Uh, and you're always asking yourself, is this true or not? So this is it, this is tricky. So it's interesting. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. The sort of choose your own adventure element of your story is something that I had heard, you know, people talking about. And there's that Black Mirror episode, but I hadn't seen it done in a sort of short form web format. And I'm I want to know how that decision was made and how it works. I know that <laughs> I, I was only able to see such a small chunk. I want to know uh-huh. what's next. What are what are the options? I guess. So um, most of the time, you see like the, the first episode, and you first start with uh, a path that you can choose. It, it's all um, all the show is based on embedded um, YouTube videos. So mm-hmm. every time that that the one episode uh, um, uh, is finishing, you have you you, you can choose uh, in which way the, the, you want the, the the story to go to go on, and so you click basically on, on the video on the scenario that you like the most, mm-hmm. and then the YouTube redirect you to, to to that specific video, and in this way you can build let's say uh, your story. Because every time you have to do it, um, you have to choose something. Uh, the the storyline changes, and so you have a lot of uh, combinations. Are there ways to return back to the beginning? Yeah, sure. I guess. Yeah. Uh, n- not the beginning. Yes, yeah, sometimes you, you have the the ability to 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 go back to the beginning. But um, let's say that uh, all, all the storylines gather to a finale mm-hmm. but of course you see you know uh, I don't know you um, you go deep deep down uh, in some other parts of the story depending on, on uh, what you choose mm-hmm. so yes and uh, all the choices sometimes they they give you the ability to, to go back or let's say that uh, you die so you have to go back uh, uh, right <laughs> Yeah. It's not just over that. You have to do something else. Yes, of course. (laughs) Um, So, Monica and Frederick, I want to ask you both the same question because I found myself struck by how funny your, um, all actually, really, all three of these particular stories I found were kind of infused with a kind of unexpected humor sometimes. Um, But I want to ask Monica and Frederick how, as you were working through the script and working on the characters, how did you decide that these weren't going to be, you know, straight dramas um, and what went into, into that process? Monica, let's start with you. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, we're de- dealing with like some serious issues or topics around the Catholic church and acceptance and just like growing up. And I was looking at it and I didn't want to make it another like teen drama soap opera 
And I feel like the Catholic Church needs to learn how to laugh at itself and ask questions. And you can be serious. Like life takes you through these cycles of being serious and finding moments of joy in those serious things. Like April's going through a lot, a lot. And it's funny to watch because we've all been there. We've all gone through that in high school. And the fact that this nun is just like laughing at these experiences that she's having in this like really heartfelt, like I'm going to be here for you, but we are going to look back on this and think that this is really funny kind of way is just, I think it makes their bond really strong and sets up the future episodes really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Frederick, how about you? Um, So, um, so I, I like Monica's answer. Can I have the same answer? <laughs> uh, you can steal part of it, but you have to give me so, part of your own. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so for my part was, you know, um, children disappearing, um, uh, autistic spectrum, uh, police, drama, and drama, and drama, and drama. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was like, I wanted to talk about topics without, without, but without being too dramatic and find a way to make it still entertaining and um, nice to watch and, you know, giving the people something that they want to come back to. And I, 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 it just came up. So while writing it, I was just like, all of a sudden these dialogues came in and uh, the situation, and I was like, let's, let's, let's take it in and try something. Because when I write something for TV, mainly for France or Belgium or Germany, it always needs to be like one thing, you know, just drama or comedy. But in between, it's always like tricky and people don't really understand it when they read it. So I wanted to, to go, let's, let's go for it. Let's just all in and see what happens and if people respond to it. Mm-hmm. I love that freedom in, in web projects or, you know, things Absolutely. that you're doing on your own is that you you kind of make the rules and you could laugh or cry or whatever. <laughs> Absolutely. That's very true. Okay, I'm going to check to see if there are any questions from the audience. And if not, I have my final questions for you all. Um, Okay, let's see. Let's start with, I guess, well, actually, let's bring up Yosh and Jeremy and Misty really quickly. Um, Thank you to the three of you, and then we'll cycle you back in for a final question. Great. Okay, Jeremy and Misty, I want to know what's next. What are you working on currently? Uh, So we have additional episodes for this project, The Score Root, um, and then uh, we are wanting to film uh, when we're able to in this crazy pandemic world we live in. Uh, And then we have another long form uh, episodic project that we're hoping to try to get off the ground too. Fantastic. Is it already written or is it sort of in this sort of pre-zone? We we have a pilot uh, and of course, there are always uh, revisions that will be done and can continue to be done, but we've got a pilot ready to go and an idea of where it goes from there, for sure. Great. And how about you, Yosh? What are you working on next? I'm developing the clown experiments from a web show to a, a TV drama. Uh, so I've written a pilot and the Bible uh, for the first season. Fantastic. And does it, I'm assuming that it probably builds out, it goes outside of the room, right? Yeah, it's not, it's not just two people <laughs> in a room, right? Yeah. Great, great. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to all of those projects. I'm going to be keeping a, a close eye on you. Um, and let's, you. Uh, let's pop in the other three, just, just because we have a couple of seconds left. Okay, Monica, tell us about what you're working on next. Um, so I am working on a episodic pilot. It's an hour long drama that I wrote that I'm starting to send to script competitions. And um, I also am in pre-production for a couple of short films that all had to be put on hold right around the same time. Um, but once production starts up again, hopefully we'll be able to film those. I have two that I'm directing and two that I'm producing. So hopefully we can do that soon. <laughs> Fantastic. And probably when they go into production, they'll probably go into production all at the same time. So you'll be... Hopefully not. (laughs) (laughs) That's going to be really stressful. But yes, hopefully they'll go in around the same time. So I'll be working a lot. Great. And how about you, Frederick? What are you working on? Uh, Writing for others, mainly. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, taking care of my children, that's the other thing. Um, and then I've, we, we, we wrote and 
directed and did, did some special episodes during the quarantine in, in Europe. So, so, the, uh, so W continued in another format, other way. Uh, I wrote the second season, so that's ready. But I need some funding to do it. Uh, and then for the rest, uh, whatever comes up. Great. Um, and how about you, Andrea? Um, so now we we shot like the pilot of um, a new a new show, let's say a new project um, that uses the same methodology as we did with the the set party. Uh, but this time we are like going through the um, we are putting the accent to, to our territory. So we, we are trying to let emerge like the beauties and the cultural side and, and historical side of our our territory. And at the moment we shot the pilot, and then we are working on a script for another another project. And this is this is something like post apocalyptic, so it, it's still developing. <laughs> but probably it will go deep down to the myth of the cave. Something uh, like Plato's that. myth of the cave. Hmm? Plato? Sorry? No, no, no. It. Um, it's like a, an, an inspirational point of view. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> the, no. <laughs> fantastic. I am excited, of course, to see all of those projects and somehow follow you all. I know we're kind of an international crew, but I feel like I'll keep my eyes on you one way or another. <laughs> Um, so I think that about brings us to the end of our time today. I want to thank you all again for uh, putting up with some of these uh, kind of vaguely philosophical questions on either a morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Um, I want to thank Yosh and Frederick and Jeremy and Misty and Monica and Andrea for being the largest panel and most accommodating when it comes to being popped on and off the screen. And again, I want to thank our fest sponsors, including Dell Technologies, AMC Networks, Shutterstock, and Adorama. And thank you so much to the audience. Um, I love seeing all your faces in the audience and um, for being a part of the Starable community and, you know, hanging out with me online sometimes and <laughs> just being uh, good stewards of our little like, web world. And um, we'll see you next time. Our next session is at from 2 to 2.30 p.m. today. I believe that is Eastern time. It's a talk back with um, some of the creators from our unscripted reality and documentary category featuring Jose Barbosa and Sarah Newins. Um, so thank you again to everyone for joining us. I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon. Thank you, Magdalena. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.